In this tutorial, we will go through how to add a best interest assessment to a child protection case. The assessment step of case management for children at risk can require us to enter information in several places. The BIA entity records information about your assessment itself. After completing your assessment, you should also update the case summary and personal history in the case narrative section. You should also update the specific needs for the case and particularly for unaccompanied and separated children, add parent and caregiver information and care arrangements. You can do this when you've finished your BIA or whenever you have all the information that you need. BIA should be done in accordance with the procedures in place in the operation. It is possible to create the BIA at the beginning of the process, even before meeting with the child. The status will be set to pending interview. Most of the relevant information available in other modules or entities will be automatically pre-populated in the BIA, such as referral, specific needs, or others. Where CP caseworkers are conducting a BIA for siblings in the same household, the caseworker can fill details that are common to all children, for example, basic needs and care arrangements, in one BIA and then copy it to the other BIA. Once they have saved the BIA, they can select the option to copy it in the ribbon. The protection case previously created for the other children should be selected. Basic information will be copied from the initial BIA to the others. When copying the BIA records, the CP caseworker will however need to complete the information personal and specific to each child, such as the child's views, the assessment and consent details. BIAs should include conducting interviews with the child, sibling, current caregivers or any other relevant persons. Wherever relevant, conducting a home visit to assess the living conditions of the child. Collecting information on different aspects of the child's well-being in different areas of the assessment. And finalizing recommendations with the child and the caregivers. Because BIAs normally happen over a course of few days, you should always update the status of the BIA in order to track your progress. You can create the BIA before you interview the child in order to help you organize your tasks. You can then see a list of all BIAs that are pending interview, pending recommendation, or pending review. This can help you make sure that no cases fall through the cracks. Before we get into how to create a BIA, I will show you how you can use the BIA status to organize your workload. Sorting BIAs by status can help you prioritize your tasks and make sure that no children are forgotten. When you go into the Child Protection module, you can select under Child Protection the BIA. When you click here, you are able to see all your active best interest assessments. You can sort your workload in three ways. You can filter by status, you can use charts, or you can create views. For quick reference, you can filter your BIAs by status. This is where you can click BIA status in ascending or descending and see those that are completed, pending interview, and so on. You can also create your own views in order to customize how you see your tasks. You'll click on this small arrow next to Active BIA and you will see that there are preset and custom views. There are system views which are pre-populated. You can utilize them to get a snapshot of your work. You are also able to create your own views. These are called custom views or my views. Down at the bottom of this list, there is the option to make your own view. You can create a person view with a query and save the filter as views. You are also able to utilize charts. This can help you see your overall workload and to jump quickly between groups of BIAs by BIA status by clicking on the columns. Now we will create our BIA. There are two ways to create the BIA. It doesn't matter which one you use, but it's always a good idea to check that a BIA does not already exist. 
If an active BIA does already exist, you'll be notified, but not stopped from creating your BIA. However, in practice, you should always avoid having two active, uncompleted BIAs at the same time. In order to create a BIA, we go to the ribbon, we click Add, and you will find the option to create a BIA. You can click this and it will open up the new window to start that process. You can, however, always do so directly from the BIA or BID section in the case. If we scroll down, we find the section BIA and BID. You are also able to just click here on the plus side to add a BIA record. It will launch the window to start the process. Once you have selected to add a BIA either from the ribbon or from the BIA and BID section, you will need to select the main purpose of the BIA. This is from a pre-populated list based on the UNHCR Best Interest Procedure Guidelines. Here, you will select the main reason for the BIA. For example, here, we will do that as care arrangements. You will then need to indicate who is responsible for conducting the BIA in BIA by. This will autofill to the user creating, so it would autofill to you. If you are the case manager assigning the BIA to a caseworker, be sure to change the user. Once you have selected this and selected the appropriate person who will be conducting the BIA, you can click OK and this will create the BIA which you can then populate with information. You will notice that the main purpose of BIA and who the BIA is by has been populated based on the previous window. You should also update the main purpose of BIA details. Remember that when conducting a BIA, we should focus on the purpose in order to make sure we assess all needed aspects, but also that we do not collect unnecessary information. This section is a free input text box where you can include details about the purpose of the BIA. Should you have received the referral for this BIA, either from a partner, another unit, uh, in UNHCR, such as resettlement, for example, it's a good idea to record this in the source of referral. You can do this by entering the text or by searching and selecting from whom it came from. For example, from community services. In order for you to save your BIA, you will need to fill out the consent details. You can use the form section to quickly navigate to the consent section. You can also scroll through to the consent section. For quick access, we click here on the form section and go straight to consent. Here, you will enter the details for consent. You may not have all of the details at the initial case creation, but you should enter whatever information you do have in relation to the consent provided for the BIA to be conducted. Consent details will have to be updated at the recommendation stage. You will start by whether or not the child agrees to share this information. This is a yes or no option. If you click no that they have not yet provided their consent, you should also add the consent counseling date. Should they have already agreed and you answer yes, you do not need to include that date. You will then need to confirm whether the person is capable of providing consent. For children, the person not capable of providing consent is always enabled to yes, that they are not able to give consent. This allows you to record another consent provider, such as a caregiver. Here, under consent provider, you should indicate the relationship to the child of the person providing consent. Here, you can select from a list. If the child is providing consent, or there is no one to provide consent, you can choose child. Here, I will choose aunt. You will then need to include the name of the consent provider. If the consent provider is registered on PROGRESS, 
you can include their record here. If they are not registered on Progress, you can enter their name here. You should always indicate if the child has provided their assent in Child's Agreement Assent field, a yes or no option. Once you have completed the minimum information for consent, you can click Save and continue with completing the information of the BIA. Now you are able to update the interview and home visit information. This section records the information of interviews completed for the BIA. Note that interview by and the interview completion date are mandatory fields in order to be able to change the status of the BIA to pending recommendation. Here, you will update who conducted the interview. For example, it can be the pre-populated names of one of the staff members, or you could look up another record. You can also include the interviewer's organization, should this be UNHCR or a partner. Then you will include the interview completion date. This is the date by when the interview had been completed. Should you have had an interpreter present, you should include their name. You should specify whether you saw the child alone or not. And here you can include a list of all the persons who were interviewed for the BIA. If home visits are part of your standard operating procedures in your operation, it is strongly recommended to fill out the details using the home visit conducted, home visit date, and whether the child was present during the home visit fields. You are also able to add additional comments where you can provide further detail on what took place. It is important to note that not all operations are able to conduct home visits for vulnerable children in which case the section might not be relevant for you. However, if caseworkers are able to safely conduct home visits for at least some children in your operation, it is recommended to always indicate whether this took place or not. Once you have completed the interview information, you can then click Save and Continue. Now you will need to complete the Assessment section of the BIA and you will complete all areas relevant to your BIA. The assessment section provides space to enter notes relating to key areas of the BIA, including care arrangements, protection and safety, psychosocial, education, legal and documentation, health and nutrition, basic needs, and other needs. You will see that there are sections where you can input information relating to these aspects. The assessment section is meant to be completed with just three to five sentences on the key aspects that relate to this factor for the child's well-being. A caseworker should always use objective language and include facts and observations rather than opinions or judgments. Once you have completed all relevant factors, you can then click save and move on to filling out the summary and recommendations. Don't forget to change the status of the BIA as you go along. You will see here that you have a workflow status. This will be automatically updated and show you where you are at as you move along. But you will need to change the status of the BIA. And this will be a very helpful tool that will allow you to track the progress of your BIA between pending interview, pending recommendation, and pending review. This will also show when the BIA is completed or for BIAs that you've stopped working on, it will say BIA closed. You always need to save your BIA before changing your status. It will ask you what status you want to change it to, on what date, and a brief comment about it. Once you have done so, you can click OK and the status will automatically update and the workflow will represent it. Here, you will need to complete the summary and recommendations based on your interview and assessment. You will include your key findings, and particularly the child's views and the caregiver's views. You also have a free input text box on the right-hand side, where you can include additional notes. 
This must be filled out in order to complete the assessment or move it to the review status. Caseworkers should always document their key findings and recommendations in some detail here. The summary of the assessment can be useful for documenting the caseworker's own summary and their observations. Once you have completed the summary and recommendations section, you can move forward to the recommended actions. Here is a detailed section where under each factor, you can state whether an action is required. Here, for example, on protection, safety and security, you can note whether an action is required for an external referral, internal referral, action by a caseworker or action by the person of concern, or no action required. Thereafter, you can include in text a summary of the issue and any immediate actions taken. Here, if you click that no action is required, you should specify why that is the case. Again, a drop-down menu will appear with pre-populated options. You will do this for each applicable section and go through the list. Should a BID be necessary, you will be asked here BID referral necessary and you will click yes or no. If yes, you will note that you will need to include what the main reason for the BID referral is. Once you have completed this section, you are then able to save or save and close and you will have completed your BIA. It's important to note that for all your best interest assessments, you must always change the BIA status at the different steps. Before moving to the action plan, you'll need to move the BIA status to pending review or completed. It is possible to copy BIAs when conducting a BIA for siblings in the same registration group. However, always be sure to make the information personal and specific to each child. Don't forget to update the consent section when you have completed the BIA.